Hello everyone, this is Ketish here. In this video, I'm going to go through the AQA Combined Science Specimen Paper for Chemistry Higher Tier. Question number six is on energy changes. Exothermic reactions transfer energy to the surroundings. Remember, exothermic means if it's referring to the temperature, and so you're going to lose heat. Draw a Reaction profile for an exothermic reaction using the axis in figure 5. Show the relative energies of the reactants and products, activation energy and the overall energy changes. So all of these, thus, relative energies of the reactants and products and activation energy and overall energy change, all of that carries two marks. Now, for an exothermic reaction, you need to remember that the energy of the reactants is more than the energy of the products because energy is actually being lost. Right? So if you start off here for the reactants, the products is going to be less than that. Right? And the activation energy is the energy needed to kickstart the reaction. So this drop in energy is the energy that is actually being lost. So the activation energy you would actually draw like that. So this bit is the activation energy, right? And the energy loss from there to there is the overall energy change. Now, let me bring in a better diagram to describe this. Get rid of my drawing. Right. So as you can see in the from the diagram, the energy of the reactants starts high, the products are low, the activation energy is the energy that's needed to kickstart the reaction. So the height of the hump as you could say, and the overall energy change is the drop from there to there. Now, since we are on the subject of exothermic and endothermic reaction and energy changes, it's worthwhile to revise the energy profile diagrams for both these and compare it. And here's a diagram. to compare the energy change for an exothermic reaction and an endothermic reaction. Right, so they're identically labeled so that you can compare it. So the activation energy for an endothermic reaction is very different to this. Right. Now, in an endothermic reaction, the energy of the reactants is much lower than the products themselves. A good endothermic reaction that you can use as an example is photosynthesis, carbon dioxide plus oxygen, right? it's absorbing energy from the light and produces glucose, carbon dioxide plus water, sorry, absorbs sunlight energy to produce glucose plus oxygen, which has much higher energy. Next part, question number 6.2. Combustion is an exothermic reaction. Calculate the overall energy change for the complete combustion of one mole of methane in oxygen. So they have given the symbol equation CH4 plus 2 carbon dioxide gives you carbon dioxide plus 2 moles of H2O. So it's already a balanced equation here. And what they have given you is the structural formula of methane oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water, and they have given you the bond energies. So in order to, the energy involved with, between one carbon and hydrogen bond is 413 kilojoules per mole. So they are reacting one mole. So we can use this 413 as it is. So that's for one bond. Now here in methane, they have, that is one, two, three, four, bonds. So if I write it 4 times CH bonds. 
right? And there's an oxygen oxygen double bond, but there's two of them, so two times the double bond, right? and there's also two of the carbon oxygen double bond, so two times the carbon double bond plus. This one, two of the oxygen hydrogen bond, but it has to be multiplied by two. So, two, it's actually four times the oxygen hydrogen single bond. So, this would be the reactants. And that's your products. So if I find the total energy of the reactants and find that of the products and work out the difference, I should be able to work out the overall energy change. So reactants to products. Let's find that. So Four times the carbon hydrogen bond plus two times the oxygen oxygen double bond, and on the other side, two times the carbon oxygen uh, plus four times the oxygen hydrogen bond. So that's four times. 413 plus 2 times 498 and 2 times that's 805 plus 4 times 464. So using the calculator, let's see. Four times four hundred and thirteen. Oops. Four times 413. Oh. Right. Four. Yeah. 1,652. Let me use a different color for this. 1,652 plus 498 times two. 498 times 2, that's 996, 996, add them together, so 1,652, that makes it 2,648. Eight hundred and five times two is one thousand six hundred and ten. One thousand six hundred and ten plus four hundred and sixty four times four is one thousand eight hundred and fifty six. So add those two values up. 1610. That gives me 3466. So, in order to find the energy change, okay, so energy 
change. It was 3,466 3, minus 2,648 should be equal to 818, 818 kilojoules. Now, for an endothermic reaction, you would get actually a negative value. Yeah, you're getting a positive value because it's an exothermic reaction. Figure 6 shows the chemicals given to a, a student. Four different powdered metals and you've got dilute sulfuric acid. Six point three. The student wants to investigate the reactivity of the four metals. Outline a plan the student could use to investigate the relative relative reactivity of the four metals W, X, Y, and Z. The plan should use the fact that all four metals react exothermically with dilute sulfuric acid. Now, if it's reacting exothermically, that means you should be able to measure the temperature change. Exothermic reactions give out heat. So, you're measuring, measure, temperature, change. So, you have the four pentals, W, X, Y, and Z, and you're reacting with sulfuric acid. So, the way you would react it is with in a polystyrene cup add a known volume of the acid to each of the metals and control variables you need to keep certain things changed so here's an example of the setup that i would use so you have a polystyrene cup reason for using a polystyrene cup is so that you try to reduce the amount of heat loss to the outside reaction mi uh, mixture so you could have 50 ml or even 100 ml you have a plastic lid so that you control the amount of heat loss and you, you need a thermometer you would use a digital thermometer rather than an analog thermometer and you want to add a known mass to a known volume of the acid and find out what is the temperature change the highest temperature change and you'd mix it uh, stir it till all of it dissolves so the equipment you should name the apparatus used and comment on the safe use of chemicals now you could list the equipment or you could actually draw a label diagram like this i prefer a label diagram <clears throat> but you could also list the equipment so you would need a thermometer a measuring cylinder to measure the acid stirring rod you you could stir it with the thermometer itself a spatula to take the metal powder and put it in there plastic cup polystyrene cup or beaker even a stopwatch if you want to time it stopwatch here again i wouldn't actually need it um a watch glass is basically where you small uh, container to hold the powders and a weighing scale or a balance so how would you add it here's a method that i would use so by drawing a label diagram you don't really have to list the equipment in your method you could actually refer to the equipment and that's more than enough so first step weigh a known mass so it has to be the same mass for all the powders of each metal into a watch glass using a, using a weighing scale measure a set volume of sulfuric acid into a plastic cup or polystyrene cup using a measuring cylinder and i have given the volume let's say 100 ml measure and record the temperature of the sulfuric acid using a thermometer so you want to know the starting temperature of the acid add metal w into the plastic cup or beaker 
Stir using stirring rod and record the highest temperature. Calculate the increase in temperature from working out from the final minus the initial temperature. Repeat this method for metals X, Y and Z. Repeat for each metal at least three times to calculate a mean. Safe use. You would do. wear safety goggles and make sure that you handle glass with care because if it breaks, it can cut you. The metal with the highest temperature increase is the most reactive metal, while the metal with the lowest temperature rise is the least reactive. So you can place the temperature range right, from the highest to the lowest, and you can work out which metal has produced the biggest temperature change. Next question. Another student used displacement reactions to investigate the relative, relative reactivity of the four metals W, X, Y, and Z. Table 2 shows the student's results. Now, displacement reactions that you generally come across is to do with halogens that we do as practicals in the classroom. You don't do displacement reactions very often other than the, that that I've just mentioned. So the ones that we do in the class are usually the halogens to find out which group 7 ele element is more reactive. Here you've got copper, nitrate, magnesium sulfate, sulfuric acid and zinc chloride. Now, these all salts, copper, nitrate, magnesium, sulfuric acid is the H plus ion and the zinc. Now, if you react metal W, X, Y and Z with copper nitrate, if metal W is more reactive than copper, then it will displace it. So that's going to be a reaction. So where they say it's more, it's reacted, that means that metal has been displaced by whatever metals over here. So copper nitrate has been displaced or the copper has been displaced by metal W, X and Y, but no change in by metal Z. What they are asking is for you to give the order of reactivity of metals W, X, Y and Z. So the easiest way to figure out now before I go to that, it's a good idea to actually just have a brief review of the remember this right, the order of reactivity of the metals. So you have potassium, which is the most reactive, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc. Now this order of reactivity, you don't generally have to remember, but it's actually good to know what they're actually referring to here. Yeah. Let me make that a bit short. Oh, there you go. Right. So, as you can see, the one that doesn't actually react, Right, there's no change. Mm, okay, let's look at it column by column. Metal W. Metal W reacts with copper nitrate, no change with magnesium. So obviously it's less reactive than magnesium. Gas bubbles produced and gray metal. So out of four reactions, there's only one that is not reacting. Metal X, there's two reactions. Metal Y, there is two reactions, and metal Z, there's no reaction at all. So, which is the most reactive? Because metal W is reacting with three out of them, out of the four, I would say metal W is the most reactive, and the least reactive is metal. Z. Now, out of X and Y, which is the most reactive? Now, here you've got fewer gas bubbles produced and gas bubbles produced. That's the difference. 
Now, if it's producing less gas bubbles, that is me, that means it's less reactive than metal Y. So Y and X. Justify your answer. Right. Reasons for so you need to write the reasons for to gain the three marks, right? W or metal is the most reactive since it reacts with three out of four let's say solutions metal z does not react with any so it's the least reactive Y is more reactive than X since more gas bubbles are produced with sulfuric acid with let's say acid next question 6.5 the student concluded that these results could also be used to justify the order of reactivity of copper magnesium hydrogen and zinc the student is not completely correct Use the results in table 2 to explain why. Suggest one further experiment that could provide evidence for the student's conclusion. So, what do they mean by this question? What they are saying is, if you look at these metals, copper, which is over here. So, if you look at, let me highlight it, copper magnesium hydrogen and zinc you could actually place which is most reactive by the way it's actually reacting with these metals how do you know that now you can see that magnesium is not reacting with any of the metals that we have added here so you could say magnesium is the most reactive so i could say it's put it as one now zinc is not reacting with three of the metals it's only reacting with metal w which means that it's only less reactive than metal w so i could say zinc is the second most reactive metal here and copper nitrate and sulfuric acid they both react with three of the metals except for metal z so it's hard to actually say which is more reactive here for that, you would need to do uh, another simple experiment to find out which is more reactive, copper nitrate or the sulfuric acid. So our answer magnesium is most reactive because it's not displaced by any metal. It's not displaced by any metal. Zinc is second most reactive because it's displaced by only one metal. 
copper and hydrogen cannot be placed in order of reactivity or are least reactive because they are both displaced by the by three metals or by the most metals so what is the experiment that you would do you would add sulfuric acid to copper because copper is less reactive than hydrogen then copper would not react with sulfuric acid to displace the hydrogen and by doing that you should be able to figure out which is more reactive so looking back at this list you can see that copper is less reactive than the hydrogen so hydrogen cannot the hydrogen from sulfuric acid will not be able to displace the copper now as a revision i've also got this table of halogens reaction and it's good to compare this so remember you'll most probably remember this table where there's no reaction for fluorine meaning that fluorine is the most reactive is not displaced by any of them same principle applies to this question as well that brings us to the end of the question and the end of the paper thank you for watching join me again for the next series of videos see you soon